Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. It seems as though we've finally gotten some more information in regards to big Navi's specifications and how the different variants of Navi 21 will correlate to specific SKUs, which will be unveiled by AMD on the 28th of October. The reveal day is less than a week away and Frank Azar on Twitter posted a peculiar image of Scott Herkelman standing on a stage with a very wide screen behind him. I'm pretty sure what they were doing was either rehearsing or filming the RDNA 2 unveil event. As due to the human malware, you can't really have live streams of sorts or live events for the public, so companies have been resorting to these pre-shot events which get premiered at a later date. Now, as we approach the unveiling of RTG's Big Navi, you're obviously going to be seeing some rumors and leaks. It's inevitable. I did make a video recently covering some information such as clock speeds, power figures, and more, so you can check that video out if you're interested. In this video, the information that we'll be going over comes from video cards, who claim they have gotten some information about which SKUs we'll see, AMD release, and the specs each graphics card will have. And I gotta say, the information is quite intriguing, so let's get right into it. So the first card they mention is the RX 6900 XT, which will be using the Navi 21 XTX chip. So this will be the full fat Navi 21 die that will be sporting 80 compute units with 5120 stream processors. The card will have 16GB of GDDR6 memory with a 256-bit bus and feature a game clock of 2040MHz and a boost clock of 2330MHz. And this will be AMD's flagship GPU, the top of the stack for now. What we don't know yet, however, is how each of the SKUs will stack up against NVIDIA's GPUs, but there is a bit more information we can go off of that I'll get to later on in the video. Now the 6900 XT does look to be quite the stellar GPU. My only gripe, however, was that if this really is AMD's flagship GPU, I would have liked to see a larger memory buffer with a wider memory bus, especially if they plan on comparing this card against NVIDIA's top tier graphics card, the 3090, which has 24GB of GDDR6X. In terms of performance, 16GB would still be more than enough even for 4K gaming, but we are hearing some rumors, well, they're not really rumors because AMD did actually file a trademark for a new tech they're supposedly working on for their new GPUs called AMD Infinity Cache, and this new cache system will be connected to the memory subsystem to help make up for some of that reduced memory bus and lower memory buffer, but as of now we don't know how any of this is really going to work until it comes to fruition, so for me it's still a big question mark. Moving along and we have the RX 6800 XT, which will use the Navi 21 XT variant chip, featuring 72 compute units, 4608 stream processors, and will also have the same memory configurations as the 6900 XT at 16GB. The clock speeds have been listed a bit lower. But that's usually how it goes with AMD and their lower tier cards. Whereas you move down the stack, the clock speeds decrease due to lower bin silicon quality. Now the last graphics card based on Navi 21 is the RX 6800 non-XT. This card based off the Excel chip, so the smallest most cut down version of Navi 21, which will have 64 compute units and 4096 stream processors, and the same 16GB memory configuration. And again, the clock speeds are lower, but I mean, with the boost clock rated at 2105 MHz, that's still fairly high and relative to last generation, and even compared to Nvidia, they're definitely boasting much higher clock speeds. But remember, it's hard to compare clock speeds between different generations and architectures, especially coming from a different manufacturer. What matters the most is per core performance, how efficient they are, and how much higher IPC our DNA 2 will bring. This is the lineup that will be unveiled by AMD on the 28th of October, and we'll find out more in regards to pricing, availability, and all of that. So three cards are to be unveiled, and if you had seen Nvidia's presentation, they too also had unveiled three cards, so that's definitely not a coincidence. I firmly believe that AMD is going to be taking this fight straight to Nvidia, and we're finally going to be seeing AMD have answers for each segment, where the 6900 XT will go head to head against the 3090, the 6800 XT will go against the 3080, and the 6800 non XT will go against the 3070. In regards to pricing, I feel like if AMD were to price the 6900 XT at 999, the 6800 XT at 599 or 649, and the 6800 non XT at 449, then I believe they will have a very competitive lineup, and one that will make their offerings look a bit more appealing than Nvidia's. But this is all complete speculation on my end, and perhaps AMD might price them the same as Nvidia because they don't want to be seen as that budget brand. However, AMD still needs to prove to gamers why they should choose 
use their cards over NVIDIA. They still have to prove to us that their cards can do ray tracing as good as NVIDIA's, where performance isn't going to tank horribly when ray tracing effects are turned on. They haven't even introduced any new deep learning tech like DLSS 2.0, which is a very useful piece of tech for boosting performance while keeping almost the same visual quality. And they also need to do a better job at appealing to streamers and, you know, showing off a better recording ecosystem. RTX Broadcast, RTX Voice, NVNC with HDR recording, these are all extra selling points that NVIDIA can leverage. Even if AMD's cards perform about the same and are a bit cheaper, if they don't have a nice software stack comparable to their competitors, then that's not going to be enough, and many will gladly pay for the NVIDIA tax. Oh, and it probably should go without saying they need stable drivers. So I'm hoping when AMD unveil these cards on the 28th, I want to see a good chunk of their presentation focusing on cool new software features like the ones I just mentioned. Anyways, video cards did also have some more information in regards to two more graphics cards, which AMD will supposedly release next year in January, which I'm thinking will be during the virtual CES 2021 conference. These two cards will be the 6700 XT and the 6700 based on Navi 22. Now they didn't have a whole lot of information to share with us in regards to these SKUs, except that the 6700 XT will allegedly have 40 compute units and a 12GB video buffer with a 192-bit memory bus. I'm thinking that these SKUs will probably be aimed towards competing against the upcoming RTX 3060 in the mid-range segment. Then Video Cards did put up all the SKUs for us in this chart, and I have to say the lineup definitely looks a lot more competitive. I'm glad that we'll finally have a full stack of cards from AMD which can answer NVIDIA in mostly every segment, and thus drive competition. Because as a consumer who's a fan of competition, it just means better pricing and more innovation. But we definitely needed this because these last few generations, basically since Maxwell, NVIDIA were so far ahead of AMD, and that the former would always be a year or so late to the market would very underwhelming products, that NVIDIA was left doing whatever they wanted. Radeon Technologies Group, I hope you guys can give NVIDIA a good reality check. Since we're on the topic of a competitive product stack, I wanted to circle back to what I said earlier in this video where I mentioned we still don't know exactly how AMD is going to position these SKUs in regards to the performance tier bracket. However, Cortex did post some more information on his website regarding specs for the RX 6800 XT, and the 6900 XT. I'll drop a link to the article in the video description so you guys can read all the extra stuff. But the main takeaway I wanted to focus on was how he mentioned that the card Lisa Su was holding up during the teaser when they unveiled the Ryzen 5000 series was in fact the 6800 XT and not the top tier 6900 XT. And if the performance they showed off during that event was in fact for the 6800 XT, then I believe we will be seeing a competitive lineup against NVIDIA's RTX 30 series. I did compare those numbers in my previous video against the RTX 3080, and they did come very close, which means I think they'll market the 6800 XT as a 3080 competitor, and the 6900 XT will challenge NVIDIA's top dog, the 3090, which I'll be extremely excited about, because like I said, we have seen NVIDIA's offerings for the last few generations in the enthusiast and high-end segment, be completely uncontested. The 2080 Ti had no competitor, the 2080 Super had no competitor, the 1080 Ti had no competitor, and the 980 Ti, well, was barely challenged by the Fury X. So it'll definitely be interesting to see how this all plays out, and I absolutely cannot wait to see what the Radeon Technologies group has in store for us. I hope you guys found this video to be informative and helpful. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description on ways to support the channel and for my other videos. If you guys are interested in more content like this, then make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one.